Hi, and welcome to a Republic of Gamers video. Using hardware from Asus, Corsair, Cooler Master, and Parvum, we're going to build this Micro ATX gaming PC with the new Maximus 6 Gene motherboard and GTX 670 DirectCU Mini. First of all, let's start with the motherboard, the Maximus 6 Gene. It features the brand new Intel Z87 chipset and LGA 1150 socket, supporting the latest Intel fourth generation core CPUs. For this build, we're using the Core i5-4670K CPU, which features an unlocked multiplier so we can overclock it. Despite its small size, it's a fully capable motherboard with upgraded power hardware called the Extreme Engine DigiPlus 3. This is made up of the DigiPlus VRM control, black wing chokes, Nexfet MOSFETs, and 10K black metallic caps. There's NVIDIA SLI and AMD Crossfire graphics support and eight SATA 3 ports, if you can fit that many drives in a Micro ATX case. The new MPCI Combo 2 card has the very latest dual band 802.11 AC wireless hardware built in and an NGFF socket for the new form factor SSDs. If you're familiar with ROG boards, you'll already know about Supreme FX Audio. This generation still features the red line, special ELNA audio capacitors and the EMI shield, as well as new Sonic Radar software. It's time to install the CPU. So start by lifting the arm and lid, and then popping off the cap. These notches make it easy to put the CPU in the right way around. So line them up, and then gently drop the CPU in being careful not to touch the delicate pins in the socket, and then lock down the lid. Next, the motherboard goes into the case, but first, let me show you why we've chosen the Parvum S1. This one is in red and black ROG colors, but Parvum offers a variety of colors, and the S1 is specifically designed to fit micro ATX motherboards, so it fits the gene perfectly. The S1's mid wall compresses the airflow over the motherboard and graphics card, improving cooling, while it still has space for a couple of hard drives and three SSDs. So with the side panel off, first make sure the correct standoffs are in place. Next, drop in the motherboard and screw it down. This is the Cooler Master Sidon 240M CPU cooler. We've chosen it because it fits perfectly into the S1 with the radiator sat on the front and it has great performance and overclocking capacity. Now we'll prepare the CPU cooler. S1 has a helpful gap on the back of the motherboard tray for us to get behind the CPU socket and install the mounting first. Before we screw the side on in, we need to apply thermal paste to ensure good heat conduction between the CPU and the cooler. Put a blob in the middle of the CPU cap and spread it evenly. Next, let's drop in the memory. We've chosen 16 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance DDR3 in black. Note that despite this being 1866 megahertz, when you first turn on any PC, it will run the memory at 1333 megahertz, so you'll need to go into the UEFI BIOS to enable the higher clock frequency. For best performance, memory should be installed in pairs, using the black sockets first. So line up the notch on the memory with the socket and push them in firmly. There is a graphics chip built into the Intel Core i5-4670K, but for serious gaming, you'll need a graphics card, such as this ASUS GTX 670 DirectCU Mini. The whole card is only 17 centimeters long, while its new Cooltech dual blade type fan design forces air down as well as out to improve cooling. 
Like all Direct CU graphics cards, inside it has super alloy hardware that improves longevity and overclocked performance. Plug it into the first PCI Express slot. If you want to add a matching GTX 670, the Maximus 6 gene supports an extra card in SLI added to the lower red PCI Express slot. For this build, we're using a single Corsair Neutron SSD, as it's one of the fastest SATA 3 SSDs available. 256 gigs provides plenty of space for your OS, apps, and half a dozen games. The Maximus 6 gene has eight SATA ports though, so there's capacity for further upgrades of hard drives for huge storage or extra SSDs for improved performance. A good power supply capable of providing sufficient stable power is essential to a reliable PC. Stability can be compromised, especially when overclocking, if the power supply isn't up to the job. We've chosen the Cooler Master V550 here, which is certainly enough wattage for our build with an overclocked CPU and single graphics card. Even if you add several hard drives and peripherals, it has enough spare capacity. Although if you want to add a second graphics card for SLI, you might want to consider aiming a little higher for the 650 watt model instead. Now the power supply is installed, we need to plug everything in. The power supply sits behind the motherboard tray, so most of the cables are kept neatly behind and out of sight. Plug the 24-pin ATX cable and 8-pin CPU power cable into the motherboard and then attach the front panel connectors. Attach the SATA power to the SSD and PCI Express power to the graphics card. And that's everything assembled. We've added the ROG GX1000 mouse, CM Storm mesh keyboard, and ASUS MX series monitor to make it a full PC. You'll also need to add in the cost of an OS to the install too. If you wish to build your own, you can see the full spec list in the index underneath the video. Then when you're done, please show us your efforts in the Republic of Gamers forum as we would love to see them.